Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Atonement Day and the importance of Atonement Day. In this class, we're going to be looking specifically at the curses that come when we don't keep Atonement Day. And we'll be jumping through a few verses, even a few books, as we look at some of the scripture that talks about this particular day. Now, we want to start over here in Leviticus chapter 23. Just briefly looking at these two verses, 29 and 30, we'll come back to these as this is the gist of this class. And what we're trying to understand here is how it says that if we do not keep atonement day, if we don't afflict our souls in atonement day, we will be cut off from among our people. We see that in verse 29. And then now in verse 30, we see that if we do any work on atonement day, then we will be destroyed from among our people. But... I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go back to the beginning of this section, which starts in about verse 26, where the Lord spoken to Moses saying, on the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire. So here it is giving us instruction on atonement day. This is a yearly feast day that comes up in the seventh month, like it says there on the 10th day of the month. And I do not plan on covering this in this video. You can look at the last video where we talked about the Association of Atonement Day and the Memorial of Flowing of Trumpets. Turns out these 10 days are what's known as the 10 days of awe. We blow the trumpets on the memorial of blowing of trumpets, letting everybody know that the seventh month has started and that we are in the 10 days of awe, which leads up to atonement day. And I did another video on that. We'll briefly touch on it here when we get into the book called Gad the Seer, which has a relationship to what we're talking about here. But you can get more detail in that other video that we did on why we blow the trumpets on Rosh Hashanah. And we've done classes on this offering made by fire and we'll be doing more of these classes coming up. So make sure you guys have the bell notification button pushed or the subscription button pushed so you can see those videos when they come out. Looking at verse 28, it says, and ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. So these are three things that we have to do on atonement day. Afflict our soul, make the offering, and notice here that it says do no work. It doesn't say no servile work or any other caveat associated with work. It just says no work. Verse 29 says, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So now let's think about this for a second. What does it mean to be cut off from among his people? Sounds like they're being excommunicated from the congregation. And when you think about it, a lot of people will be in this state because many people, even the majority of the people in the world, are not even familiar with the Day of Atonement. And even those who are, many of them are not afflicting their souls and are not taking off work on that day. And so they are not afflicting their souls. And so they are in this cut off state. So what do they do when they're cut off from among their people? Do they become atheists? Well, I believe since we are spirit beings and that eternal spirit that dwells within us has a yearning to be with our father. So those people, once they're in this cutoff state and yet still trying to appease their spirit, will end up down there at the church trying to find that relationship that was severed by not keeping these feast days. But we'll come back to this. So let's go on. Verse 30 says, and whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, that soul will I destroy from among his people. So does that mean that they're going to die? Atonement day is a life or death situation. Well, that's what it sounds like to me. What else could it mean to destroy these people? And if you're wondering, OK, well, what happened that all of these people who have missed atonement day over all of these years are still walking around amongst us? Well, you have to remember that the prophetic fulfillment of atonement day has not occurred yet. In fact, since the memorial of blowing of trumpets was fulfilled back in 2014 or 2017, atonement day is the next feast to be fulfilled. And we've done classes on the timing. You can check our channel for some of those classes. But the way I see it, 
the year 2024 is when we're talking about this prophetic fulfillment of atonement day. And I believe that is when we'll see many of these people get destroyed along with all wickedness from the planet. So this is nothing to play with. But anyway, we'll come back to that verse too. Let's go to verse 31. It says, and ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all of your dwellings. Now, we have to pay particularly close attention to this verse because first it says no manner of work. It doesn't say no servile work like we mentioned earlier. You see that in some of the feast days where we're allowed to do certain kinds of work like cooking or cleaning or chopping wood or making fires or anything like that. But on this one, it says specifically no manner of work. And then it says that it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Now, a statute, you some may be wondering, what's the difference between a statute and a commandment? We find them both listed in the book of the covenant, which is the law and starts in Exodus chapter 20 with the Ten Commandments and ends in chapter 23, which includes the statutes. Well, the difference let me just give you this analogy. When you have a foreigner who is living in our country, he's expected to keep the statutes and the commands or the laws of our country. Well, if he breaks a commandment, like for instance, stealing, we're going to put him in prison. But if he breaks the statute, we're actually going to kick him out of the country altogether. And that's the way it is with our father's laws. There are punishments associated with breaking the commandments. But when it comes to these feast days, like it says up there, we can actually be separated from his people or destroyed altogether when we break these statutes. But anyway, let's look at verse 32. It says, and it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even from even to even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Yep, like we saw up there in verse 28, we are to do no work at all. So down here in verse 32, he's declaring it to be a Sabbath day. Even though this day is on the 10th day of the month and normally our Sabbath days occur on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th days of the Holy Sacred Month, this here is a special Sabbath day, a special day that we're being sure not to do any work whatsoever which would include, like we said, cooking or making fires or mowing a yard or anything like that. Now, let's look at this part right here where it says the ninth day of the month at even. So this fast actually starts at sunset. So he's being careful to make sure that we know that this fast actually starts at sunset. Now, all days, of course, start at sunset. All of the feast days and all of the Sabbath days and every other day starts at sunset. But here, for some reason, he's pointing it out specifically that this day, this feast day actually starts at evening. And that's when we're expected to fast from one evening to the other. So that is the time when we will be celebrating our Sabbath. And verse 32 finishes out the discussion on Atonement Day. Verse 33 starts to get into the Feast of Tabernacles, which we'll be doing more classes on that as we get closer to that date again. So make sure you have your subscription button pushed because it is only after the sighting of the new moon that we can be sure of when these days start. This is a tentative schedule here, which we're pretty sure about 95% sure we'll see the new moon on September the 26th, but we have to be sure to make sure we're all on the same page. This is extremely important and we have to get this day right. So again, make sure you have your bell notification button pushed. We're going to come over to the next part of this class talking about the fast and for it, we're going to be looking in the Apocalypse of Elijah, which is the book we read many years ago and was the number one video on our channel for several years. That reading of the Apocalypse of Elijah. So you can go check out that video too at your leisure. This is a very, very, very important book about the end times. And when we come down here in about verse 13, we see that it's talking about atonement day. Let me just read it. It says here, O wise men of the land, concerning the deceivers who will multiply in the last times so that they will set down for themselves doctrines which do not belong to God 
setting aside the law of God, those who have made their belly their God, saying, The fast does not exist, nor did God create it, making themselves strangers to the covenant of God and robbing themselves of the glorious promises. So there is a lot going on here, but this is exactly, almost exactly what we read over there in Leviticus. When it was talking about the people being cut off, that's what it means right here when it says that they are making themselves strangers to the covenant of God and robbing themselves of the glorious promise. But these would include many ministers of today. And like I was saying earlier, this is what I believe happened. They found themselves cut off and then found themselves in a church congregation teaching other people to reject this covenant and these feast days, thereby getting everybody cut off. These are the deceivers who will multiply in the last times. Preachers and teachers, so-called prophets and ministers who are actually telling us not to keep the feast days, even though back over there in Leviticus 23, it says that it is a statute forever. And I often ask them, how long is forever? When does forever stop? No, it never stopped. That's a part of the law. Like the Messiah said, the earth will pass away first before the law ever goes away. But these people, like it says here, have made their belly their God. So they don't really care about the law at all and are robbing themselves of the glorious promises. Verse 14 says, now these are not ever correctly established in the firm faith. Therefore, don't let those people lead you astray. And I'll say it again. Don't let those guys lead you astray. Anybody who's telling you not to keep the Feast of Atonement or any of the feast days is doing just that. They're actually trying to get you cut off or destroyed altogether. Verse 15 says, remember that from the time when I created the heavens, the Lord created the fast for a benefit to men on account of their passions and desires which fight against you so that the evil will not inflame you. Again, this fast is associated with the 10 days of awe, which is a time of repentance. So while we are yet human and still are making mistakes and are subject to the whims of our flesh, we have this day of atonement, which cleans up much of that sin so that it don't completely take us over. Or like it says here, the evil will not completely inflame us. This is a yearly cleansing process that actually kind of keeps our sin in check. And so I guess that means if we don't actually partake in this festival, then our sins will just be multiplying from year to year, leading up to like we talked about the prophetic fulfillment of Atonement Day, when all wickedness and wicked people will be removed from the earth, being utterly destroyed from amongst our Father's people. But anyway, verse 16 says, But it is a pure fast which I have created, said the Lord. Talking about the Day of Atonement. Again, I'm going to point you to other videos we did coming out of Isaiah chapter 58, which talks about what a true fast is. We see over there in uh, verse 3 where it says, Wherefore have we fasted? These are the people complaining, not understanding why it is that we have the Day of Atonement and why it is that we have to fast. But when you go through this chapter 58, what you find out, like it starts to talk about down there in verse 5, they were actually fasting wrong. Abstaining from food is not the way we are supposed to be fasting. We read over here in Isaiah chapter 58. The fast that he expects us to perform is to look out for our brother, praying for each other, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and giving shelter to the homeless. That's the fast that he expects us to do. That's what he means by afflicting our souls. Turns out when we do good things for other people, it humbles us which humility and meekness is necessary if we want to see the kingdom of heaven. So check out Isaiah chapter 58, or you can check out that other video on the proper way to fast. We're going to come back to the apocalypse of Elijah, which in verse 17, it says, The one who fasts continually will not sin, although jealousy and strife are within him. So it's saying that this is not going to make us perfect, but this fasting is actually going to keep us in check. It's kind of like a governor if you know what I mean, that keeps us from going full tilt into the abyss. Now, 
Verse 18 says, Let the pure one fast. But whenever the one who fasts is not pure, he has angered the Lord and also the angels. And it's because these people are kind of squandering their possessions. I mean, if if they are pure and they're giving their stuff away, then our father has plenty of room to return what they've given. Whatever you've shared with anybody else will come back up on you. But if you have evil in your heart, and you're really only expecting some reward for what it is that you're doing, well, that's going to actually nullify the fast. So purity is necessary. And some of you guys may actually consider being rebaptized before the memorial of blowing of trumpets, especially if you didn't keep the spring feast, like you see it over there in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15. If you did not keep the feast of unleavened bread, many people call that Passover, you again got cut off. So some of you who are watching this video are actually in a cut off state right now. And I believe um, we could talk about it down there in the comment section. But I believe that since the repentant heart has to be forgiven, according to the scripture, one way to get back into the good graces of our father is to be baptized again. And I offer you yet another video that you can see that we did on the proper way of baptism. Turns out we can be baptized in our own homes. So check out that video. Back in the Apocalypse of Elijah, verse 19 says, And he has grieved his soul, gathering up wrath for himself for the day of wrath. So those who are just going through the motions, not really caring what they're doing, are actually doing more harm to themselves. So we have to take these days serious. And I believe what's the problem with this is, is you have people who are not really pure, nor do they care about being pure at all, will hear a video like this and we'll say oh well i'm just going to go keep the day of atonement or the feast of tabernacles but after that then they go back to their old state again they go back to doing what it was they were doing matter of fact when the pagan holidays come up they'll be right there partaking in those days too we know they don't know the difference between right and wrong is because they will be at the holy feast days just like they'll be at the pagan feast days not caring which is which or knowing that one is good and one is bad so they're just going through the motions and kind of making a mockery of our faith making a mockery of these feast days these days are all about repentance and getting right but they're just there for the wine and for the lamb well, by doing so, they grieve their soul, gathering up wrath for the day of wrath. But anyway, looking at verse 20, it says, but a pure fast is what I've created with a pure heart and hands. Like we said, that's over in Isaiah chapter 58, which talks about what a fast is. And we can also hear about that in the book called The Shepherd of Hermes, which we covered in that video, which talks about the proper way of fasting. It doesn't tell us to abstain from food altogether. It tells us to only have bread and water and to give the funds that we would have normally spent on our meals to the widows and the Levites and the homeless and the poor and such, which is the same thing we read over in Isaiah chapter 58. The fast is really about looking out for our brothers. But anyway, verse 21 says it releases sin. It heals diseases. It casts out demons talking about this fast here as the purpose of the fast is to release sin. And like we talked about, if we don't do this, then we, our sins are just piling up from one year to the next and it heals diseases. So anybody sick amongst us, we definitely need to be looking at keeping these feast days. Because like in other scripture, we read that keeping these feast days this is really our only defense against these diseases that are coming up on the world are these feast days. Then it says and cast out demons. So this is very important that we actually keep this fast. You can imagine all of this that's going on for those who keep it. And this is why we want to share information like this with our loved ones. You might want to consider sharing this video because your family members and your friends you don't want anything bad to happen to them well you know give them the opportunity to hear this information if they want to do it that's fine if they don't that's fine but you can do your part by at least sharing it with them so consider doing so 
Verse 22 says, it is effective up to the throne of God for an anointment and for a release from sin by means of a pure prayer. So if we want to be relieved of our sins, this is necessary to our walk. And like we said, we might want to be baptized first. It's not necessary if we've done so recently, but if it's been a while or if we've been in a sin state for a while, then we might want to consider doing so. But we definitely want to keep this fast either way. But now I did want to show you one more thing before I closed out this video up there in verse 19, where it talks about how they are gathering up wrath for the day of wrath. Let me, let me come over here to Gad the seer and show you what he's talking about here. And we've done videos on this one, too. I'll probably have to put a playlist together for all of these links that I've given you guys. We're going to come all the way down here to chapter 14 and briefly look at this section talking about the books. This is talking about the book of life and turns out there are two other books that must be considered. This is all being read by the man dressed in linen. You can hear about him in Ezekiel and Daniel and other places in the scripture who this guy is. But he's reading in these three books. You had the book of the righteous, which again is the book of life, because these people are granted eternal life. These people whose name is found in that book. But then you also have a second book, which contains the intentional sins of his people. And then there's a third book which contain the wicked deeds. But you see down there that those found in the third book are turned over to Satan, who's allowed to take them and do with them what he wants to do with them. Well, they would be that goat of atonement. You remember, there are actually two goats in atonement. One is a sacrifice and the other one they actually drove out into the wilderness and turned them over to Satan. So those will be the wicked that will be removed from the earth at the end of these 10 days of awe. You can see the 10 days mentioned there when it talks about how a third of the month had passed by. A month is about 30 days, so that's 10 days. And when we come back up to verse 1, we see this all started on the first day of the seventh month, which is the memorial of blowing of trumpets. So this is the 10 days of awe leading up to the day of atonement which I believe will be that year when we'll see all of these catastrophic events come up on the world. And whether that's the year 2024 or not, we want to be prepared when that day gets here. And so that's why we're doing this class to give you guys the heads up on the importance of keeping the fast and not working. Don't forget that. And we have the offer made by fire. We'll talk about that in a future class on the day of atonement. So I'm going to end it there. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And shalom.